Good morning, dear friends, and greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and who is worthy of all our worship and praises and thanks, for there is no one like him. And let us continue to meditate on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. What did Christ accomplish through his blood? And that is what I am going to mention. Without giving much explanation, I would like to mention eight wonderful things that Christ has accomplished through his precious blood. And for all these points, there are scripture references. So I encourage those of you who are listening to write down these references as well, so that uh, you will have a good idea of how to share this truth to others. For without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no remission of sin. So when we witness to others, remember, as the apostles did, it is a crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his blood and his resurrection. These are the truths that must be brought uh, forward uh, to those who uh, whom you are witnessing. And so may the Holy Spirit help you. What did Jesus accomplish through his blood? There are eight things that he has accomplished. And uh, you, you are ready with your write pad, writing pad or diary and with a pencil. Please write down these references as well. Number one, his blood forgives the sin of all who repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This truth is mentioned in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. And I hope you will have enough time to write down these references. Number two, his blood ransoms all believers from the power of Satan and all evil and demonic powers of darkness. There are several references to this. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. First Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. And Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And number three, his blood justifies the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is, we are justified in the presence of the Lord God Almighty, the Father, in the person of Jesus Christ. And the reference is Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. And number four, his blood cleanses believers' consciences that they might serve God without guilt in full assurance of acceptance of God. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And then again, chapter 10, verse 22. And chapter 13, verse 18. Number five. His blood sanctifies his people. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. Number six, his blood opens the way for believers to come directly before God through Christ to find grace, mercy, help, and salvation at the right time. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Again chapter 10 verse 19. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 18. 
Number seven, his blood is a guarantee of all the promises of the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29, again chapter 13 verse 20, Matthew chapter 26 verse 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 25 and lastly number 8 the power of his blood saves us reconciles us and purifies us and the believers are free to continually appropriate his blood as they come to God through Jesus Christ Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, chapter 10 verse 22, 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. Now you will notice there are certain scripture passages, references are the same for two, three other points as well. It is because in the same verse all these truths are mentioned. Now consider these eight things that the blood of Jesus Christ has accomplished. And it is for this reason it was necessary for Jesus, the sinless one, the eternal one, had to come from heaven and be a human being and then make himself a sacrifice for the remission of the entire human race. From the first person... Adam and Eve till the last person who will be born and live. What a power the blood of Jesus contain. My friends, it is because the blood of Jesus Christ is not ordinary. It is a divine blood. It is therefore holy blood. And it is therefore absolutely pure blood, sinless. And the devil knows the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that is exactly the reason the devil didn't want Jesus to go to the cross and gave himself to be broken in his body and shed his blood. From his birth, the devil tried his best to destroy him and stop him from going to the cross. Remember the time of his birth, how Herod ordered all the children living in Bethlehem uh, to be killed, those children who are two or under. Because he calculated with the help of experts and uh, determined according to the wise man's timing that he would be at least nearing two years old. So he wanted, the devil wanted to, the, was it Herod who initiated it? No. It's the devil who determined from the beginning of uh, time and even before the foundations of the earth when God the Father and God the Son together determined to save humanity by the Son of God himself coming down in the form of a human being. And then at the time of after his, soon after his baptism, oh how he was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil and how the devil tried his best to make Jesus to bow before him and stop going to the cross. And then, as he drew near to the days of his, 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 his crucifixion, remember at Gethsemane Garden, the burden and the, the, the bitterness of that cup that was given to him to drink was so bitter, unbearable pain that he cried out with his human will, Father, if it is possible, if there is any other way you can do this, 
arrange for the redemption of humanity. Do that, but remove this cup from me. But God, the Father, was silent because he knew there is no way. And therefore, Jesus submitted himself to Father's will. Nevertheless, it is not my will, but your will be done. And thus he went to the cross, accomplished what God decided, the shedding of blood of his son, Jesus Christ. What a marvelous love. What a one wonderful grace. And what power. That's why the blood is so powerful. And even today, there are two weapons God has given to his church, to us as his followers, that we may appropriate and use it against the devil and all his temptation and all the demon powers and evil forces. Number one is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the book of Revelation says they have overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. The devil has no answer to the blood of Jesus. It is so powerful. And the second weapon is the word of God, which is called the sword of the spirit. And the devil has no answer to the word of God either. And that is the sword that the son of God used in the wilderness against all his temptations. And the devil could not win an inch from the, in, in the, over the life of Jesus Christ. That is the power of the blood. And you consider these points. And if anybody did not get, please let me know. I can help you to get this. But I want you to know that when you are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, no enemy can defeat you. You are under the blood of Jesus. You are secure and safe forever. And then the sword of the Spirit, the word of God in your hand and in your mouth. Use them as effectively as you can. And be a victor and never a victim. You are an overcomer. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your people. There are people who are maybe struggling in their lives with temptations, with the powers of darkness and evil forces, witchcraft, witchcraft powers, and uh, all kinds of evil exercises that men, evil men do to destroy others. But as your people, we thank you for these weapons given in our possession. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and the eternal word of God. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. Let them appropriate these and be overcomers in Jesus' name. God wants you to be an overcomer, a victor, and not a victim. God bless you. Enjoy your day and have a wonderful day of victory. Amen.